find Jesus. He's got to find you. You can't go looking for him. He goes looking for you. Luke 19, look at verse number 1. The Bible said, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. If you know anything about the text, he's getting closer and closer and closer to Calvary. And uh, <clears throat> every step he takes... He knows it'll be one of his last. And I, I believe we serve a God, a God of order, not a God of accident. We wasn't just here because of a big bang and it all appeared. God makes no mistakes. And he entered and he passed through Jericho. Man, I can't get past that verse. <laughs> Man, now me all the ghosts. Um, <clears throat> the last time he passed through Jericho. <laughs> He found an old harlot. <laughs> he didn't have to pass by Jericho, but he did. I remember the day he passed by my Jericho. <laughs> I tried my best to find him. I was looking for him. But he passed by Jericho. The last time we read about Jericho, the walls come tumbling down. Except for a certain portion of the wall where Rahab the harlot lived. And the uh, Bible said that her house stood on that wall while the rest of the walls come tumbling down. I would call that a demolition gone bad because for one section of that wall it wouldn't come down first implosion in the Bible and there's a piece of that wall just would not come down because there was a scarlet cord hanging out one of the windows from an old harlot and as Jesus entered and he passed through Jericho he's, he's passing through again the Bible said that there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans. You know what that means, don't you? He's a very, very smart man. But he's a religious man. He knows that Old Testament Pentateuch. He knows the Old Testament. He knows the Word. He's a publican. And the Bible said he was rich, which means he probably wasn't a... Lacking in any kind of learning, he had went to the greatest schools of his day and he had graduated with honors and he was society's number one man. Here he was rich. The Bible said in verse number three that this religious man, this rich man, this well-to-do man, this man of great knowledge, this man that was a tax collector, the Bible says that he, he, he sought to see Jesus. And if you got your pen, I want you to underline this right here. Here it is. He sought to see Jesus for who he was. That's right. He looked to find this Jesus. He was looking to find this man for who he was. And I could preach an hour and a half on why Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus. Because if you know anything about April 15th, if you're a tax collector, you come into contact with a lot of people in your office. Because everybody has to pay taxes. Can I get a witness on that one this morning? 
And Zacchaeus had, had been collecting taxes from people that were blind, but now they're seeing. He'd been collecting taxes from the lame that couldn't walk, but now they could. And he'd been collecting taxes from people that were deaf, but now they're hearing. He was collecting taxes from people that used to go to the well and look for water, but they're no longer thirsty. He was collecting taxes from people that had been demon-possessed and running around cutting themselves in the cemetery, but now they are sitting clothed and in their right mind. And no doubt the stories that he was hearing at his office desk, the stories that he heard, it summons him to find out who is this man, Jesus. For he wanted to see him. He wanted to meet him. He wanted to shake his hand. He wanted to know who he was. But can I say to you on the authority of the word of God this morning, that ain't enough. It's not, it's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to sit on a pew. It's not enough to give to the Lord. It's not enough to come back on Sunday night. It's not enough to come on Wednesday night. It's not enough to be religious. He was looking to find Jesus for who he was. In other words, he didn't know what he looked like. He didn't know his hair color. He didn't know his eye color. He didn't know his stature. All he knew was a man called Jesus. And he was passing through Jericho. Yes. And the Bible said that he sought to see Jesus for who he was and he could not for the press because he was of little stature. He was a short man. He was a little man. Some say that he no doubt was a, uh, a, a, a man that was shorter than anybody else at that time. He was a little man, a little of stature. And the Bible said in verse number 4 that he ran before. He, he ran before this press. He, he ran before this crowd in verse number 3. And the Bible said that as he, as, as he ran, and by the way, if you're short and your legs are half the size of everybody else's legs and he's trying to outrun the crowd, he's moving pretty quickly. For he's having to run twice as hard as the average man. He's having to work twice as hard as the average. Can I tell you, you can work your way to heaven and still die and go to hell. That's right. You can overwork yourself in the work of the Lord and still not know the Lord. And he, and he was out working, he was out running. And it, the Bible said, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. So he knew the direction that Jesus was coming. He knew the direction through that town. He knew the busiest streets. He knew the way in and out of Jericho. And the Bible said that he found a sycamore tree for the Lord was to pass that way. The Lord was to pass by that certain spot. And I'm going to tell you something. You can run into God anywhere. You can run into him in a car. You can like Miss Amanda testified this morning. You can be in your shop and run into him. Amen. Out working and God passed by your way. You can, you can run into him at your house. That's where I got saved. You can run into him at the house of God. I mean, there, there is no limit to where God will pass by. And so he thought that he was going to be passing by that way. And the Bible said in verse number five, and when Jesus came to the place, oh, you better be careful when you read those words because it wasn't a place. It was the place. Right. It's not, an, it's not an accident the testimony was given this morning. It's not an accident you're here. It's not an accident the Lord laid me this message on our heart. This is not an accident we're in Luke 19 instead of Joshua chapter number 6. Right. And he climbed up in a sycamore tree. He's looking for the Lord. And when Jesus came to the place, the Bible said in verse number 5 that he looked up. Who looked up? Zacchaeus isn't looking up because Zacchaeus is already up. Right. Zacchaeus can only look down. But the Bible said that when Jesus came to the place. <laughs> let me ask you the question. Who's looking for who? Who's trying to find who? That's right. Who's trying to meet up? Zacchaeus is there hoping that he'll pass by. But Jesus is not there hoping. Jesus, the Bible said he came to the place. He knew where he was going. He knew where he was stopping. He knew what tree he was going to sit under for a minute. And the Bible said, and when Jesus looked up. What about that? 
The Bible said, and saw him. Who saw who first? <laughs> well, I remember the day I found Jesus. You might want to get saved. That's right. Because I, I remember the day that Jesus found me. I remember when he stopped by my way. I remember when he came through my Jericho. And the Bible said, and when he saw him, he said unto him, you got your pins? And he said unto him, hey, mister. No, that ain't, that ain't the right version. Hold on. And he, and he said unto him, hey, sir. What's your Bible say? <laughs> huh? And the Bible said, and he, and, he, and he looked up and he saw him and he said unto him, Zacchaeus. I think that Zacchaeus probably had the same moment that Mary had when she supposed him to be the gardener. <laughs> And uh, she didn't know his name either. Uh, but he looked at her and he said, Mary. And that's all he said. And the Bible said that she fell at his feet. And she said, Rabona, uh, Master. I'm telling you, when he calls your name, uh, ain't nobody going to call your name like he calls your name. And he won't have to say it twice. He won't have to say it three times. Honey, when he calls your name, bless God, you know it. And he called his name Zacchaeus. And by the way, there's a lot of people that knew his name. But I believe when he heard Zacchaeus, I believe he said, whoa. Something fluttered in his soul. He said, now why would you say something like that? Because I remember the night he said, Adam. Man, it was at that family reunion and that the old church reunion, and she said she remembered. Robert said, I remember the day I was in my workshop, and he stopped by and said, Hey, Robert. Has he ever called your name? Or did you just get up out of a seat and repeat a prayer after somebody and then get dumped? You went down a wet center, or went down a dry center and come up a wet center. Has he ever stopped by and called your name? Who's looking for who? There's a lot of people that are going to lift their eyes in hell because they walked down an aisle and they repeated a prayer and they got dunked and they thought they had God. I'm going to be honest with you, Zacchaeus tried everything in his power to find this Jesus. He tried everything in his power to come in contact with this Jesus. But if you read Luke 19, he had nothing to do with it. He had nothing to do with the contact. He didn't know what he looked like. He didn't know, he didn't know anything about it. He, all he had heard is everything that he had been doing for everybody else. And he wanted to meet the miracle worker. He wanted to meet the life changer. He wanted to meet the, uh, the wave calmer and the peace speaker and the wave walker he wanted to meet Jesus but he still came up no pun intended here short and he said unto him Zacchaeus listen to this think about this I mean there's people thronging him there's people I mean they're 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 touching him they're all around he's got a crowd of people following him and the Bible said that he looked up and he said Zacchaeus he said make haste and what did he say come down can I tell you on the authority of the word of God you'll never meet Jesus until you come down You, the Bible said, for God resisteth the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And he said, Zacchaeus, he said, you come down. And he said, make haste and come down. Come down now. 
You know why Jesus told him, get out of that tree, come out of that tree? You know why Jesus told him to get out of that tree? Because Zacchaeus represents mankind. He represents the world. Man is trying to save himself. Man's trying to elevate himself. Man's trying to be God. Jesus looks up at him and he says, Zacchaeus, you come down because it's not your job to crawl up a tree. It's not your job to climb up a tree. That's my job. It's my job to climb up a tree. It's my job to be nailed to a tree. Your job is to come down out of the tree because we're going to swap trees in just a little while. Amen. You can't save yourself. Right. The Bible said he made haste and he came down. Now watch this. This is powerful. Jesus said for today. <laughs> Today is the day of salvation. Now is it accepted? He said for today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next Sunday. I'm not passing through here then. I'm not going to be, hey, I may not pass by Leatherwood Baptist Church again. But I am today. Hey, I want you to come down when? Today. He said come down for today. Here it is. I must abide at thine house. I'm not a Greek theologian or a Hebrew scholar, but I do know that I've studied the word must, and it's very powerful. Because it's the same word that you'll find in the book of John, chapter number 4. When you go to John's gospel and you read about the woman of Samaria, you remember the woman at the well? Jesus said these very words. He said, for I must needs go through Samaria. That same word must in John is the same word that he's given Zacchaeus here. It's the same Greek word must. He said it is definite. There is, listen, it's un debatable it's undeniable for today I must abide at thine house it was the last Wednesday night February 1996 I was about 14 years old I was on my way to hell without God I'd went to church that night looking for him I'd went that night knowing I was lost I went that night knowing I needed to be saved but I'm telling you I never came to the altar I never went down and bowed down my knees to the altar but I remember that drive home. I said, God, please in Jesus' name, put a hedge around this 1996 Grand Marquis. And God, please don't let my dad drive off the side of the road. Uh, don't let some drunk driver hit his head on. Honey, I could feel the flames of hell licking my feet. I knew if I died, I'd die go to hell. You say, what happened? Uh, I left church uh, and I was trying to get away from him. I really was. Uh, but he crawled in the back seat with me and he rode down Noah's Ark. Uh, and he rode down Highway 138. And he rode down Hemp Hill Road. And he made a left with me down Highway 155. And my dad turned into 4493. He turned in with us. Man, I'm telling you something. I walked in that living room and he walked right behind me. I stopped by the first room on the left. And that's where he stopped by too. And listen, I wasn't sleeping in the bottom bunk bed that night. I was sleeping in the top. And guess who crawled up to the top? bunk bed with me that night too and man I was a laying there and I'll never forget it man he said my name clear as day and buddy my heart fluttered I said Lord God in heaven I'm lost I'm lost and I'm undone oh I've been to church my whole life I, I've graduated the patch the pirate class I've memorized Colossians 3 16 it'll make you sick I know the Romans road and the Ephesians bypass and the Philippians overhaul. I knew that King James Bible from the front cover to the back. My mom was a Sunday school teacher. My dad a song leader. Man, my Paul Paul was a God-fearing preacher. But that wasn't enough. That night the Holy Ghost crawled up into bed with me. And he called my name. 
came. And honey, he said, today I must abide in your house, in your heart, in your body. I'm glad to know, praise God, I chunk my pride. I chunk my religion. And I said, I'm going with Jesus. Come hell, high water, sink, swim, live or die. I'm going with God. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what the church thinks. I don't care what the preacher thinks. I don't care what the baptismal committee thinks. They're going to have to dunk this old sinner again. Because that night I got on my knees and I cried out to a fresh holy God. And I said, God save Adam Humphreys. And I'm going to tell you something. Life was different from that day forward. For today, I must abide at the house. Luke 19, 5, he said, come down. He said it in Joshua 2. <laughs> when he told them walls, y'all got to come down. <laughs> I'm telling you, buddy, you better be careful when you get around Jericho. Stuff's going to fall, hit you in the head if you ain't careful. Every time you find God, you find Jericho, things are falling. <laughs> things are rocking. Things are moving. And I'm telling you, Zacchaeus was moved by the sweet spirit of God. And the Bible said that he came down. And I'm going to tell you something. I've heard it said a million times, man. When I took that first step, brother, he's telling me his testimony the other night. He said, when I took that first step, I think that's when God saved me. You know what Zacchaeus been telling people? He said, when I took that first tree limb. <laughs> when I hit that first tree limb, man, the joy bells in heaven were ringing in my soul. That's when that act of faith reciprocated what God had told him to do. You know what faith is? Faith is hearing God. Faith is believing God. But faith is obeying God. And I'm telling you, you can look for him until, you, until you've got a search party. You can go to every church. You can try to find him the best you can. And I'm going to tell you something. On the testimony of Zacchaeus, he'd say this. He said, you can't find him. But if he ever finds you, <laughs> if he ever finds you, things will be different. The Bible said this. He made haste and he came down. And the Bible said that he received him joyfully. Oh, I like verse 7. I like verse 7. You better be careful every time you see they, them, and those. They're normally lost people. And when they saw it, they all murmured. That's what happens when God gets to move and people start gossiping and murmuring, sowing discord among the brethren, lying. You see, every, I'm telling you, every time in the Bible where God starts moving, people start murmuring. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. How do you know God's moving at the church? People murmur. The Bible said, and they saw it, they all murmured, and they said that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. What a horrible testimony for the Son of God to have to live through. What a terrible testimony that Jesus went home to eat with sinners. Can I tell you, if Jesus didn't go home to eat with sinners, I wouldn't be here today, and neither would you. And I like verse number 8. The Bible said, and Zacchaeus stood, and he said unto the Lord. What about that? He said unto the Lord. He said, behold, who? Lord. Oh, that's different. That ain't talking about, that's not talking about the Lord over you or some master or some boss or, hey, that's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords he's talking to. He said, Lord, boy, this is how you know he got saved. He said, the half of my goods I give to the poor. Half. Some people can't give 10%. They fret over 10%. Zacchaeus got so gloriously saved, he said, I'm giving 50% to the Lord. I want to give half. Everything I've got. Everything I've got, I give unto the poor. And he said this, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I want to restore it unto him fourfold. So if he took $100 from somebody illegally, he's going to return them a check for $400. Right. It 
it's amazing when somebody truly gets saved, they reach for their pocketbook. <laughs> Man, they're ready to give. They're ready to go. They're ready to do what God wants them to do. And the Bible said that he gave and he restored. And he started getting his life right. He started getting right with people in that town. He started making, hey, he started making, I guarantee you, better. Can you imagine, can you imagine April the 16th, 2,000 years ago in Jericho? There's a knock at your door. The wife looks through the peephole and she said, Honey, don't answer it. Let's act like we're not here. It's the tax collector. It's the IRS. Don't answer it. It's Zacchaeus. Hush, kids. Shh, y'all be quiet. It's Zacchaeus. I, I know you're in there. I saw your camel out back. <laughs> Hey, hey, I, I, I know you're in there. I can hear them kids playing. I can see as that guy drops his head and says, did we not pay enough in our taxes? Did we, not, did we not give the state what was theirs? Did we not give the federal what was theirs? Have we not paid enough? And I can see as he walks to the front door and he opens up the door and old Zacchaeus is standing there, tears running down his face. And he said, I need to get right with you, dear brother. The other day you come by the office and I, I accidentally charged you too much. I lied and I cheated and I stole. And here's a check from my office from Zacchaeus and Incorporated, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh yes, and I can see as that man said, "Praise God, Hallelujah, Zacchaeus, you want anything to eat? Would you like to come and stay a while?" No, I gotta go to the house next door. He goes the next door and said, "Listen, I know I've cheated you, and I know I've robbed from you. Here's fourfold everything I've taken. I'm telling you, his life changed. Right. He went from being a taker to all of a sudden being a giver." Yeah, Lord, have mercy. I didn't know all that was in here. And Jesus said to him, this day, he don't fool around, does he? This day. What did he tell that thief on the cross? Today. Shout that with me with me in paradise. I like him this days and today. I might preach a series on this day. Whew. This day. Salvation has come to his house. For so much as he is the son of Abraham. And Jesus, as he's leaving Zacchaeus' house, he said these famous words that we quote all the time from the word of God. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Can I tell you something? He can't save anybody until they get lost. Kyla Rowland wrote it best. I'm going to let Amanda come out of the pen. Kyla Rowland wrote it best when she wrote these famous words. I'm glad I got lost so I could be found. I'm going to tell you something. That's why, that's why the world is not going to be converting to Christianity anytime soon. Because they don't need him. They don't want him. And they're not lost. God's got to get you to the place in your life where the testimony of others has drove you up a tree. Can I, can I ask you, have you been bragging on Jesus so much? That you're driving your boss up a tree? You're driving your co-workers up a tree? Have you bragged on him so much they say, would you just shut up? You're driving me up a tree, man. You're driving me up a wall. Somebody drove Zacchaeus up a tree. For the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up into the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, he said, Alex, he said, Ken, 
Heath, Adam, you come down. John 3.30, one of my favorite verses. I must decrease so that he must increase. Now I'm going to be honest with you this morning. There's some people, I guarantee you, sitting in this room right now, you can look back over your life, just like Robert testified, and you could say, man, he never called my name before. He's never called me. John 6, 44 is still in my Bible. It ain't went nowhere. Still in the Word. Until He stops by your place. Whether it's on a pew, in a car, in a workshop, or on the top bunk of your bedroom, in your bedroom, wherever it may be. When He passes by, you'll know it. And when He calls your name, you'll know it. I remember the day He called my name. <laughs> this old boy got under a Holy Ghost conviction. Preacher got to preaching. God was dealing with his heart. He'd been battling and battling and battling about his salvation. When he was riding down the road late one night, near the middle of the night. He said he got to pray in the car. He said, God, he said, if, if you don't mind, he said, would you just speak to my heart, God? Would you make it real in my life, God? I want to know that I know that I know, God, that you're calling me, that you're wooing me. God, I want to know if I'm saved or lost. God, can you reveal it to me? Can you show it to me? And he said he got to go on down that road. And he, he travels that road. He said, every night of my life. He said, there's an old intersection up ahead, way out in the middle of nowhere. Just four stop signs and a gas station. Not just any gas station, but a shell gas station. He said, as I was coming around that curve, I was talking to God. Oh, God, speak to my heart. God showed me. He said, I was coming around that curve. And he said, I looked up. And he said, I could see it afar off, way down at the intersection. He said, the lights had burned out on the S, on the gas station sign. He said, I probably saw it a mile away. He said, it said, hell. Hell! Hell! He said, the Holy Ghost said, is that clear enough? He pulled over on the side of the road in the middle of the night. Put that car in park, got down on his knees. Said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner, and save my wretched soul. You ever prayed that prayer, God, call my name? God, show me. John 10, I'm going to read this. Help me out here. John 10, verse 27. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said this in John 10, 27. He said, but my sheep hear my voice. I guess Zacchaeus was a sheep. I guess I'm a sheep. And I know them. And what, and what do they do? They follow me. Now what does he do for them? And I give unto them eternal life. And they, one of the very few times where that word they is talking about his people. And they shall never perish. Neither. Oh, this is good. This is good. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus said, My Father, which gave them me. <laughs> I love that verse. My Father, which gave them me. <laughs> Has He ever gave you Jesus? <laughs> My Father, which gave them me. <laughs> is greater than all 
and no man's able to pluck them out of my father's hand. He went from his hand to the father's hand. Oh, verse 30, here's why. He said, because I and my father are one. I got, I got another one for you. Lord, by this time he's dead and he stinketh. He said, roll the stone away. They said, it'll stink. He said, roll the stone away. They said, it'll stink. He'll stink. Yeah, most sinners do stink to high heaven. <laughs> he'll smell like alcohol. He'll sm hey, he'll smell like Bud Dumber. You don't get Bud Wise, you get Bud Dumber. And the Bible said, Jesus saith unto him, Lazarus, come forth. Then he, which was dead, <laughs> which was dead, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. <laughs> Has he ever called your name? Or do you have the testimony that you found him? Because I remember when I found him. I remember when I repeated the prayer. And I remember when they baptized me. And nothing changed. But I remember that night where he found me. Who was looking for who in Luke 19? I hope the Lord lets you see it the way I see it, the way I perceive it. Zacchaeus, he could have done everything in his power to try to pick out who Jesus was. But the Bible said when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. I thank, the, I thank the good Lord in heaven whispered in his heart and said, Son, you're right there next to the tree where I wanted you to be. Now look up. Now there he is. He don't know you, but you're going to know him. That's Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus! Come down. The Bible said he made haste. I studied that out too. I think he fell. I think he jumped. I really do. He made haste. There's only one way. There's only one way for a dwarf to make haste in a, in a tree. And that's to jump out. And I'm going to tell you something. I guarantee you, he was caught. Bet Jesus caught him. You say, I don't, I don't know about all that and everything. Well, I'll ask him.